In this clip, Martin Fowler speaks on how to determine the ideal size for a function without relying on fixed line limits. People have often argued about what a good length for a function is. When I started, um, a good length of function was two pages of printout on alternate green and white WhatsApp paper. Probably about 100, 150 lines of Fortran or something. That was a good function length. Later on it became what would fit onto one screen. Um, but I don't think it's about how many lines of code it is or how many space it takes up. For me, what matters about function length is, is there a difference between what the code does and the content of the, the code itself? Is, that, is there a, a sort of a semantic difference between the two? Let me illustrate this with one of my favorite examples, which Kent uses from Smalltalk. Back in the day, Smalltalk, when it was running, it was running on black and white computers. If you wanted to highlight an area of graphics or an area of text, the way you would do it was you would reverse the video because we're black and white, that's pretty much all we could do. If you look in the Smalltalk code system, there is a method for highlighting an area of graphics and it says reverse. Notice the word highlight is longer than the word reverse. The implementation is actually shorter than the, than the function name itself. But the function name tells you what your intention is. I want to highlight. It just happens to be highlighting it by reversing the video. It's that distance between your intention and how you're going to implement that intention that leads you to want to make a function. Whenever you have that distance, you want to capture it, even if the implementation is shorter than the statement of intention, which is very rare, obviously, because you can usually get it in a word or so. And that can be really critical. I don't know how many times that has really helped me. Because when you do need to change the implementation, you can do that without changing, trying to find all the places it needs to change. While Martin Fowler talks about focusing on intent instead of line count as a deciding factor for when to break down a function, Uncle Bob comes with more specific advice. Keep functions 5 to 10 lines long. So which one is it? Should we break down functions when there's a gap between what the code is doing and how it's implemented? Or should we just stick to small bite-sized blocks of code? At first glance, these two approaches may seem to be mutually contradicting. Fowler's advice may feel too vague to apply consistently, while Uncle Bob's rule too rigid to fit in every situation. One is subjective, the other one is simplistic. But maybe the real problem is treating either of them like a rule, because neither line count nor semantic intent can cover every case, and neither should be followed blindly. Instead, the better approach is to treat both as diagnostic tools, much like how a doctor approaches a potential illness. If a function is long, let's say over 10 lines, that's a symptom. If there's a gap between what the code does and what it says, that's another symptom. Maybe there's a missing abstraction. Maybe a concept needs a name. But just like how a fever isn't always serious, a long function or a vague name doesn't always mean something is wrong. But there's definitely something to be said when multiple diagnostic tools point to the same problem. Thoughts? Subscribe for more.